Thank you very much for the invitation to speak virtually at this meeting. My name is Vinnie Melnick from the Mallinckrodt Institute of Radiology, and my subject today is the many faces of bowel ischemia. I personally find this to be a challenging topic, and obviously one with a lot of clinical importance, so hopefully you'll find this talk helpful. I have no relevant financial disclosures. I'd like to begin my talk of a case of a patient who came into our emergency room in cardiogenic shock recently. There's evidence of cardiogenic shock uh, in that the IBC is dilated, there's distension of the hepatic veins, very heterogeneous enhancement of the liver, and hyperenhancement of the adrenal glands. But I'd like you to take a look at the small bowel in this patient. Notice how narrow in caliber the small bowel is and how contracted it is with an almost gasless appearance. And this is a manifestation of shock and hypoperfusion in this patient. This can be a finding in acute small bowel hypoperfusion. We're used to thinking about shock bowel in these patients, and that's certainly a manifestation as well. But one finding you should look out for is that of spastic reflex ileus, which is a neurogenic response to ischemia manifesting with contracted, collapsed small bowel loops and potentially decreased size and number of the mesenteric vessels. Here's a patient with a more classic hypoperfusion complex with a flat IPC, hyper-enhancing adrenal glands, and both hypo and hyper-enhancing small bowel. Another case here to demonstrate the the spastic reflex ileus as a manifestation of hypoperfusion. Um, this is a patient in septic shock. Um, notice that she's third spacing. There's lots of body wall edema and ascites. But look at the small bowel. Again, completely gasless, very narrow in caliber, and very small superior mesenteric artery here. Prior studies can be helpful in making this distinction as well. And notice that this prior CT from merely a month before shows an SMA that's at least double in size of this very contracted uh, mesenteric artery in a patient with non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia. Here's another patient with hypoperfusion, in this case a recent cardiac arrest, the patient went right from being resuscitated to getting a CT scan to determine the underlying cause. Um, notice the very heterogeneous enhancement of the liver in this patient with uh, recent MI. And also notice the difference appearance of this small bowel. This is an ileus, but not a spastic reflex ileus, but more of a, a dilated ileus. And note the paper thin wall and the hypo enhancement of multiple bowel loops in this patient with a more advanced non-occlusive ischemia. The intermediate or late findings of bowel wall dilation and paper thin appearance of the bowel wall is more commonly seen with occlusive disease it occurs because of a hypotonic or paralytic ileus resulting from transmural necrosis involving the muscles and the nerves. That leads to this um, atonic paper thin appearance. And also pay attention to the enhancement. Normally the bowel wall should enhance uh, the same or more than skeletal muscle. When you see the bowel wall attenuating less than skeletal muscle, you should be concerned about the possibility of underlying bowel ischemia. This Transition to dilated small bowel in the setting of ischemia can occur relatively rapidly. Here's a patient who came into our emergency department around one in the afternoon. She had an iodinated contrast allergy, so we got this non-contrast CT. Very non-specific appearance of this uh, small bowel in the left mid-abdomen. Um, really not too much dilation, a little bit of pseudofeces and perhaps some bowel wall thickening, but uh, you know, perhaps on a busy day, you might even call this normal. Um, this patient, however, had a high clinical suspicion for mesenteric ischemia, and so she was sent for an MRA of the abdomen that uh, confirmed a proximal superior mesenteric artery occlusion, not only on the MIP image here, but on the axial and coronal images as well. And notice what's happened to that uh, bowel within the left mid-abdomen. It is dilated, the wall is now paper thin, um, and there is ongoing uh, transmural necrosis leading to this ischemic um, ileus appearance. <clears throat> One of the things I find most confusing and most baffling about uh, bowel ischemia is that arterial occlusion can not only lead to spastic reflex ileus and not only lead to bowel wall thinning, but also bowel wall thickening. This is one such example of a patient with an aortic dissection extending into the SMA. In this arterial phase, the false lumen is either thrombosed or is not filled due to slow flow. 
but even though the SMA is open, there's likely a dynamic occlusion of the branches of the SMA leading to this bowel wall thickening and sort of a reperfusion type phenomenon. Bowel wall thickening with arterial small bowel ischemia um, can present with nonspecific features, uh, that is bowel wall thickening with mucosal hyperenhancement and mural stratification that can look like enteritis from many other causes. When the, the cause is ischemia, it's either due to reversible injury, reperfusion, or superinfection. Um, another entity that can cause bowel wall thickening in the setting of arterial ischemia is bowel wall hemorrhage, especially in the setting of obstruction. I'll talk more about that later. But of course, that manifests with a more, a more homogeneous, hyperattenuating appearance. Here is a case of a patient presenting to the ER with vomiting and abdominal pain. He has a very distended stomach. Um, he had diabetes. We thought this may be due to gastroparesis. But also notice that he has some dilated uh, small bowel loops as well. Uh, and so he was diagnosed clinically with an ileus. Um, his mesenteric vessels were open. Um, but he decompensated over the next few days and presented later with this CT, which demonstrates sort of a myriad of findings. He has some relatively normal small bowel in the left mid-abdomen. He has some clearly abnormal bowel in the right abdomen that demonstrates no wall enhancement, marked dilation, and thinning of the bowel wall. So this is clearly necrotic looking small bowel. And then right on the edge of these two areas is this area of bowel wall thickening, which is probably an area of incomplete ischemia or perhaps reperfusion. And so a nice example of several faces of bowel ischemia in the same patient. Keep in mind that microvascular ischemia can also manifest with bowel wall thickening. And this is a patient who came in with terminal ileitis. Um, consideration was given to a new diagnosis of Crohn's disease. Um, but um, in talking with the patient, he had a recent binge of cocaine use. And so vasospasm related to cocaine use um, was the underlying cause for this patient's um, bowel wall thickening and non-surgical uh, bowel ischemia that ultimately was managed conservatively. This is perhaps a better known cause of bowel wall thickening in the setting of bowel ischemia on this non-contrast CT. Notice this patient has very nice mural stratification of the small bowel associated mesenteric edema. And for the observant uh, members of the audience who might notice the arrow here, um, there is a hyperattenuating area in the superior mesenteric vein um, pointing to some thrombus, which of course attenuates more than um, non-clotted blood and this was a case of venous small bowel ischemia that was confirmed on this MRV, demonstrating clot within the SMV um, and extensive increased T2 signal, not only within the submucosa of the small bowel, but within the mesentery as well. And a nice target sign here on the post-contrast T1 weighted images. So venous small bowel ischemia, although not as common of a cause, um, does famously lead to more severe bowel wall thickening compared to arterial causes. That's due to uh, occlusion of the outflow of the capillary beds, obviously. And um, in contrast to arterial ischemia, it's less common for venous ischemia to lead to necrosis, especially when very central due to collateral flow. When you see this condition, you should think about hypercoagulable states, um, recent surgery or inflammation, and infiltrative processes in the mesentery like tumor or perhaps sclerosing mesenteritis. Here's an example of someone with an occluded SMV due to thrombus, associated mesenteric edema, bowel wall thickening, and mural stratification, particularly in this loop here. This patient was managed conservatively with anticoagulation and came for a follow-up study about a month later. Notice that there is now near complete recanalization of the SMV with the exception of this most central part and development of extensive uh, collaterals within the mesentery, resolution of small bowel wall thickening, and resolution of mesenteric edema. Here's another patient with bowel ischemia and another patient manifesting that ischemia with a targetoid stratified appearance of the small bowel. Um, in addition to that bowel wall thickening, notice the mesenteric edema, but also the configuration of the small bowel. You have clustered, dilated small bowel loops in one area of the abdomen that look like they're tethered towards one point. And this is a patient with a long segment, closed loop small bowel obstruction uh, complicated by ischemia. Uh, 
When it comes to small bowel obstruction, um, CT has several signs that may be helpful in predicting ischemia. The most sensitive of those signs is mesenteric fluid, which we very commonly see in patients with both ischemic and non-ischemic small bowel obstruction, but also be on the lookout for more specific signs that include reduced enhancement, bowel wall hemorrhage in particular, pneumatosis, and reduced enhancement of the mesenteric vessels. Here's an example of a patient with a small bowel obstruction, multiple dilated small bowel loops, several of which demonstrate thickening within the left mid-abdomen. Notice the extensive mesenteric edema and fluid, as well as ascites. Um, I'm gonna show you a cine here that nicely demonstrates the mesenteric vessels occlude in a twist at the root of the small bowel mesentery. At the same site, there's a transition point right here as the bowel travels behind the mesentery. So this is an internal hernia behind the small bowel mesentery, leading to volvulus vascular occlusion and ischemia. Another note to remind you about small bowel intramural hemorrhage as the most specific sign for ischemia in small bowel obstruction. This patient came in to the ER, has this uh, KUB demonstrating a relatively gasless abdomen, uh, got a CT that then demonstrates um, a very high attenuating um, wall thickening within this loop of small bowel mesenteric edema and hemorrhage as well. Notice that the wall and the mesentery are attenuating more than skeletal muscle. And on the coronals, very nicely radially distributed uh, balloons on a string type appearance of these small bowel loops due to a long segment closed loop obstruction, clear ischemia um, that was managed operatively. Here's a less uh, subtle case of someone with an operative emergency. And this patient has an inguinal hernia with a uh, small bowel loop in the right lower quadrant with intramural gas that unfortunately has perforated. There's gas within the hernia and a resulting infection that's caused necrotizing fasciitis in his right thigh and of course mesenteric venous gas as well. Um, perhaps not surprisingly, this patient did not survive um, this uh, complicated ischemic small bowel obstruction. Extraluminal gas tends to be a late finding in small bowel ischemia can manifest either within the wall of the small bowel or within the mesenteric or portal veins. Um, when there's perforation, pneumoperitoneum can result. And I do think this is one instance where lung windows in particular are helpful in detecting subtle intramural or intravenous gas, keeping in mind though that those findings are not specific for bowel necrosis. Here's an example of a patient who looks very similar at a glance, lots of pneumatosis, extensive portal venous and mesenteric venous gas, there's bowel dilation. We were concerned about ischemia. The surgeon was concerned about ischemia. This patient went to surgery, but was found to have normal small bowel. And retrospectively, this was thought to be due to the patient's chronic steroid use. So how do we tell the difference? A number of studies have been done to try and determine whether CT findings, whether clinical findings are the determinant of who has benign pneumatosis in quotes, or who has bowel necrosis. Um, really, our job is to look for ancillary features of ischemia, such as bowel wall thickening, mesenteric edema, and vascular occlusion. But the result of many of these studies is that the clinical picture is often best. And so our job is to re report the findings. And uh, ultimately, some of these patients may be observed with serial lactates and physical exams. Ischemic colitis can certainly manifest with pneumatosis as well. Um, here's a patient with chronic atherosclerotic disease of the superior mesenteric artery who had a recent hypotensive episode, had some intramural gas within the cecum. I think very easy to overlook unless you use lung windows here. But keep in mind that ischemic colitis is not typically um, one that manifests with bowel necrosis. It's more common than acute mesenteric ischemia. Most people recover without sequelae, and the most common manifestations are relatively mild colonic wall thickening and um, with a left-sided predominance, although it really can occur anywhere within the colon. This paper from Cruz et al. in emergency radiology um, demonstrates that bowel wall thickening and inflammation are the most common findings in ischemic colitis, but these other findings, um, fluid, dilation, and extramural or extraluminal gas in the wall or the veins uh, pretend an increased risk of severe ischemia. Important to look at an enhancement in ischemic colitis, just like in small bowel ischemia, 
This is someone with uh, diffuse colonic wall thickening and notice the hypo enhancement of the uh, colon um, relative to the rectum. Um, and this patient unfortunately had near complete colonic necrosis at surgery. Again, uncommon, most patients with ischemic colitis will have relatively mild bowel wall thickening and a relatively benign course. So to close here, I'll show you a collage of four patients here, all of whom have bowel ischemia. This patient with bowel wall thickening and mesenteric fluid, this patient with contracted spastic small bowel and narrowed mesenteric vessels, this patient with bowel wall thinning, and this patient with mild colitis. So please remember all these different appearances um, when you're reading CTs in patients with uh, suspected ischemia. And thank you very much for your attention.